Christian McCaffrey missed the first half of the season, comes back. He was supposed to fix everything. They didn't like you, like you pointed out, they didn't make a trade at the trade deadline. Why do that? What, what they don't need to. They got Christian coming back. And so far, I think it's fair to say he hasn't been nearly the player he was last year. What do you what do you how do I ask this? Is he washed? Is this the beginning of the end? Is this the end of the end? Or because he's he's signed through 2027. What is this like the worst contract on the team? Or is he gonna be able to are they gonna be able to salvage this? I don't think he's washed, but um I think like if you go and like when I, I I went and watched the first time, I thought, okay, he looks okay, but he's not really getting it done really. And then I went back and watched it again. And I started look kind of breaking it down a little bit more inside outside, like running between the tackles. He ran the ball pretty effectively. It was when they asked him to run outside the tackles Where's where the he burst? looked tentative. He lacked yeah. burst. They yeah. were beating him to the spot and there was nothing there. Now, a couple of times there was, they tried to run wide and it was clear. It wasn't blocked. Right. And there was one play where you see Brendel kind of a close up of Brendel's face. He like pivots away from the, blown up tackle for a loss and he's just shaking his head so a lot of that's on the offensive line but they are not running christian effectively outside inside he's still he he's he broke off a couple nice runs he looked pretty quick but running to the edges he either has lost a step or they're really bad at blocking it or some combination thereof do you think that he's going to eventually regain most of the form he had last year and he'll be able to have 20 carries a game and five targets or more? Or do you think that they're going to have to bring in a running back next year who's similar to him and, and sort of spell him? Like, what, what is the future of the running back position here? Because it seems like Kyle Shanahan is as good as his running back. And his dad was the same way too. They're very much a running back centric offense. They have the guys that they need right now. I mean, they literally have Garendo's a speedster. If you, if he can get to the second level, he can be gone. Mason's a tremendous back. He was like third or fourth in the league until McCaffrey came back. They still will need another back. Um, somebody who, you know, somebody who's got some breakaway speed. Yeah. Um, maybe some receiving ability, a third down guy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Grendo's obviously got breakaway speed, but I mean, somebody who's got pick and slide ability and instincts and breakaway speed. It's a great draft for mm-hmm. backs. There's all kinds of good backs in this draft. Um, and they'll have their pick of them. I, I would say, I would say that's not a priority because they already have some young talent there. But what are they going to do with Mason? Are they going to trade Mason? Are they going to keep Mason? If they're going to keep Mason, I think they're all right. If they're going to trade Mason, they probably need another uh, back. And and if if you're right, if the backs are big in this offense, so like I would consider going after a back earlier, uh, not waiting so late if uh, the right guy was there. I mean, this kid from Boise, Ashton Gianti, is a just a game breaker. I mean, if you could yeah. get a guy like that, I think I would be interested early. Yeah, it just seems like, again, you know, the Niners have made their biggest runs, not really when the quarterbacks have been the hottest. It's like when Raheem Mostert got hot, the Niners went to the Super Bowl. When Debo Samuel became a running back and no one could stop him, the Niners went far. And when Christian McCaffrey got here, the Niners were kind of unstoppable. But if he's not going to be that kind of a player anymore and Kyle doesn't really trust Garendo and Mason or whatever whatever the issue is, let's, let's go subtopic. Why, why do you think Kyle Shanahan won't use those two guys anymore? I mean, everyone can see how good they were. The numbers back it up. Christian's not himself right now, and yet Kyle's being stubborn. Like, why do you think that's going on? It's baffling to me. I think I know why. I, I think it has all to do with ball control and, um, you know, holding onto the ball. Garendo fumbles. Mason fumbles. They fumble a lot. Who did he love? Who did he love that wasn't McCaffrey? Mitchell. He loved Mitchell. What did Mitchell never do? Fumble. fumble. Yeah. Kyle, run, all offensive coaches hate guys who fumble. These guys fumble. He's not going to say it because if you say it, now you're inviting, you know, you're inviting 15 guys to punch at the ball every week if you say it. If you say, hey, my guy's got a problem holding on to the ball, and it's like that, that headline circulates. So he's never going to say it, but that's the reason. Those guys can't be trusted to hold on to the football. And Christian can, even though he fumbled last week. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that, there's the irony. In, yeah, in Kyle's yeah. mind, though, Christian is reliable and Mitchell's reliable, and those guys aren't. Yikes. Well, enjoy those 2.9 yards per carry. Dale says, should Kyle contact Aaron Rodgers about taking a rest 
in the dark room. Maybe a little ayahuasca tripping. Kyle needs a break and a puppy. Whew. It's interesting. That is interesting. Let's just say Jed came to them and said, hey, look, this was an ugly year. You didn't yeah. go to the playoffs. No. Injuries were a factor, but they're not an excuse. Um, guys, it's time to it's time to get back where we were. It's time to get back on that level and can compete for the sixth Lombardi. Um, and we haven't done we we've competed. We haven't gotten it done. I think he, you know, at that point, I think, you know, he may say to Kyle, hey, you know, you have a couple more years now uh, before you know, or he may say you have a year. You have two. I don't know. But if he did put some kind of parameters or deadline or timeline on Kyle, one, I think there's it's likely that Kyle's going to be like, screw you. Mm -hmm. I'm coveted. I'm taking my ball. I quit and I'm going elsewhere. And because he knows he's going to get a job elsewhere. So there there's that possibility, which I think is volatile and could happen. Um, but then there's also the what if Kyle, what if he tells Kyle he's got two years um, to make it happen? And Kyle's like, well, I don't know if Brock's the guy. Do I want Aaron Rodgers? Do I want two years of Aaron Rodgers? Uh, he sure looks good at times. I think it would be a colossal mistake, but um, I could see them having a very hard conversation about it because Aaron Rodgers for the next two years, probably you, pro you probably have as good a chance or maybe you could argue slightly better chance to win a Super Bowl than if you stayed with Brock and paid Brock. Um, but now things get complicated, right? Because you're going to be paying Brock Purdy a, 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 a large sum of money. It's going to dramatically impact the rest of the roster. So they're going to have to, you know, I don't know how Kyle feels about Brock at 50 million or north of 50 million. Maybe, maybe he's all for it. Maybe he's not. If I were Aaron Rodgers, I would want to go to the Vikings. Yeah. Or, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, like Sam Darnold isn't their choice. And J.J. McCarthy may not be ready. And that defense is incredible. And they have J.J. They have Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. Uh, that's isn't that exactly what uh, freaking Brett Favre did, too? He went from the Packers to the Jets to the Vikings. Just do the Brett Favre thing. It worked out for him. Just don't steal money from Mississippi. I'm sorry. Allegedly. Yeah. Um, you know, the Browns. <laughs> I don't know. The Browns don't have a quarterback. Um, there aren't too I like many spots. I mean, the Raiders. Uh, yeah, but he wouldn't want to go to the Browns. He wouldn't want to go to the Raiders. I mean, I, no. I think he would want to go to Minnesota. That's a good team. Maybe the New York Giants. Yeah, who's who wouldn't want to play for the New York Giants? Uh, Andre Hatley says, do you think Belichick is the answer as Kyle's replacement, or was he just a good coach because of Tom Brady? I'm more concerned about the offense. Well, Belichick is one of the greatest defensive coaches the league has ever seen. He's one of the greatest defensive backfield coaches the league has ever seen. His, yeah, it worked especially great with Tom Brady, and he's not a great offensive coach, and he wasn't yeah. great in Cleveland before Tom Brady, and he wasn't necessarily great in New England after Tom Brady. So you got to have a quarterback in this league. But he, there's nothing about, you know, I mean, to, Bill Belichick is, I mean, they were, I mean, think about it last year. Last year, Belichick had a better defense in New England than the 49ers had here. So, yeah. um, you know, he's, and what stinks, he what stinks about him is despite all of his years of experience and all of his ex connections, his offensive coordinator is going to stink. It'll be Josh McDaniels or Bill O'Brien or Matt Patricia. Like, he's got no one. And Joe the reason Judge. it worked is because he had Brady. He he was he had Charlie Weiss for a while. Like, he always had bad coordinators. He just had Tom Brady. So, I think that's the problem with him. He might fix the culture. He'd have a great defense. But who's going to be coaching Brock Purdy? And why is it going to be Matt Patricia? Right. And something tells me Kyle's not going to be like, yeah, I'll be the offensive coordinator. Huh? 